Highlights of Miles Guo's live broadcast on February 22, 2020 CCP's Coronavirus Incinerators Martial Law Bioweapon Pandemic According to an informant who managed and coupled the incinerators with the quarantine hospitals of Xinkang and Lishanshan, 40 mobile incinerators have been working for 24-7. Each can burn 5 tons or 30 corpses per day. Human bodies can be disposed from inside the hospital, dropped through a duct into the incinerators and burned to ashes. None can tell the precise death toll. These incinerators, like mobile crematoria, were used in the SARS outbreak 2003 and also cast doubt on that true death toll. There are 400,000 incinerators having been deployed throughout China. The manufacturer has got an order for an additional 1 million incinerators. Those who died at home are many times more than those who died in streets or in the hospitals. At least 3,000 medical doctors and nurses have been infected. There are 47 crematoria in Wuhan. Each has 12 production lines. In the whole province of Hubei, there are roughly 2,000 crematoria. Given all have worked at full load, it is estimated by now that about 100k have been cremated per day. Beijing The Martial Law According to a military doctor, the actual contagious cases and death toll caused by the coronavirus are many times more than the official statistics. Whilst Wuhan military sector is where the martial law was imposed the earliest, Beijing is where the most stringent is imposed. What has been activated is precisely biochemical counter-warfare. The previously informed death of the staff of the CCP Central Commission for Discipline Inspection was mistaken. The death is now corrected as having occurred in the military sector in Beijing. The dead had been infected with the coronavirus from the visiting military officials from Wuhan. The death in the military force sounded alarm to the CCP Politburo that the virus was out of control. The hospitals in Beijing are therefore heavily guarded. The 301 hospital held a confidential emergency meeting. At the meeting, the attendants were informed that a bioweapon, specifically an artificially engineered virus, had been released from the P4 lab in Wuhan and had caused many to die. Openly however, the CCP government lied that the virus was naturally originated from wildlife, was preventable, controllable, treatable, and was not transmittable between humans. Hong Kong, the failed bio-weapon It is a karma for the coronavirus to take effect in Wuhan and Beijing, rather than as intended in Hong Kong. Indeed Hong Kong missed a calamity that had been deliberated by the CCP. At a meeting in the last week of August between Carrie Lam, Yang Jiki and the head of PLA Hong Kong garrison, Wang Qishan murderously elaborated his seven quelling strategies. One was to deploy quasi-bioweapon and bioweapon for example tear gas, blue dyed liquid and a plague. In Wang's view, it was idiotic for the CCP to repress Hong Kong protesters by using tanks and announcing martial law, since the entailed economic and political costs were too high. Consequently days later, Lam threatened Hong Kong protesters that continuing protests would cause destruction of good and bad alike. When the virus first kicked off and infected more than 3,000 Hong Kong citizens, Lam's government underreported only 20 cases. Hong Kong people did not give in. Afterwards things went out of control in the mainland. Thus the CCP scheme of cracking down Hong Kongish by bioweapon was aborted. The contagion in Hong Kong is yet to explode. While tens of thousands of citizens are expected to be in quarantine, the worst affected group would be exactly those the Hong Kong people hate the most. Surprisingly it is the CCP who most wants this group of people to die, so that no secret keepers would stand out to expose its sinister scheme. These are the CCP's running dogs, the governmental officials, the four shameless groups, and particularly the killing apparatus, the Hong Kong police and fake police. Expected to be infected in huge numbers, the fake police would be transferred back to their mainland origin. In Shenzhen and Zhuhai, Quarantine centers and mobile incinerators are ready to accommodate and dispose of them. China, political security The CCP leadership are struggling to maintain the economy in order to prevent the regime from collapse. The CCP leaders are so afraid of death that they are even cancelling the two national conferences. Yet they force enterprises such as Huawei, Foxconn, Foss and Pharmaceutical to resume business so as to earn foreign currencies for them. Those who return to work are prone to the virus contagion and risk their lives. Correspondingly the CCP has adopted a scheme, imprison the ill people in circled localities, perish them by mobile incinerators and bury their ashes locally. In spite of fierce struggles at the top level, all factions agree that in case of losing control in Wuhan, 
Shanghai, the bona fide CCP power center, would be in danger. Thus they dispatch CCP Gestapo head Sun Li Jun to Wuhan. Sun has issued an order to jail any disobedient and truth exposing people in the detention centers or quarantine centers. Within 72 hours after his arrival, Sun seconded 20,000 armed policemen from Beijing to ensure the enforcement. The CCP prioritizes the protection of the old and new Politburo leaders and members for political security. The best doctors, nurses and medicines are reserved for them rather than dispatched to the epicenter or the front line of the epidemic. Indeed the CCP hope to wipe out the old, weak, ill, disabled and dissident amid the coronavirus outbreak. The Globe Pandemic To shift the blame of the virus epidemic, the CCP is ready to name a few and penalize them as scapegoats. High on the list are Guo Diyin, Wang Yanyi, and Xi Zengli. The CCP also blames the U.S. as the origin of the coronavirus. Whereas the epidemic is out of control, the CCP has determined to take advantage of it. Wang Qishan, Jiang Zemin, Yang Jiki command an implement to spread the virus all over the world. The coronavirus outbreaks are expected to sweep Japan, Cambodia, the U.S., Canada, Europe and Asia etc. As all countries are overwhelmingly busy in dealing with the pandemic, no one has time to hold the CCP accountable for the truth. If the virus genuinely originated from wild bat, it is unnecessary for the CCP to cover up the truth, as they did the amounts of SO2 emissions in Wuhan, Chongqing and part of Shanghai. For the CCP, the political security is of first and foremost importance. As suggested by the motto of the P4 lab in Wuhan, any access to the virus opens Pandora's box. The virus epidemic has gone beyond the CCP's control. Aiming to combat the U.S., the CCP sanctioned to establish the P4 lab in Wuhan, researching and engineering viruses. Deployed to murder Hong Kong people, the virus however failed the CCP goal. Instead it has turned around unexpectedly to savage the CCP's heartlands. The 29th February will be a watershed. The CCP is seriously concerned about it. The world will wake up to the truth of the coronavirus. Thanks for hatching.